Okay, so this looks a little bit silly, but it's a pretty windy day here, and so I thought I would try using this little tiny microphone and see if it works. So I am sitting in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia, and that's where I'm from. It looks like this. There's the city behind me, and the mountains behind that. We're on the Spanish banks, and we're not very far from the University of British Columbia, which is where I'm doing a research project right now. I'm looking into haptics at the SPIN lab, Sensory Perception and Interaction. So I just wanted to introduce you to where I'm from. I'm so glad to be here and to share this with you. It's such a beautiful, wonderful place. And uh, this is Vancouver. So here we are at the University of British Columbia. We're at the SPIN lab, that stands for Sensory Perception and Interaction. And I've been working with these guys for the past month, looking at the different types of haptics that they use to investigate my non-screen tangible interaction theory about enabling meaningful experiences. So I'm gonna introduce you to a couple of the things we've been working on and take you on a little tour. So the lab is just this small room here. I'll show you it. But it's part of a bigger building where they have different facilities to be able to do manufacturing and metalwork and things like that. They have a little 3D printing room. And so most of the stuff that they're doing is sitting in this room and doing the research part. Um, stuff on their computers, doing small experiments. The thing that I'm standing in front of right now, you can see it here. That's just a little workspace. And they've been, we've been working with a shirt so the sewing machine has come in handy and the drill press and stuff like that. Um, not for the shirt, that doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean. And then they have, you know, the different things that you might need, soldering iron, etc. And it's just a really um, alive place during the day. There's a lot of people in here exchanging ideas and having great big thoughts that could change the world and it's quite an amazing environment to be part of. Right now it's very early morning so nobody's here yet and I just thought I would show you around before anybody came in so I didn't disturb them. Part of getting to know this place has also been getting to know what people are working with. So one of the guys, Colin, has been working with something called Haply, and it basically allows you to feel what it feels like to be in a online environment. So this is what it looks like. So as I move this little piece around here, this is just laser cut materials, and he's built his own board here to go with it. And basically that's where I can feel what it feels like to be in this online environment, this online physical space that is represented in the physical world here. So I'm actually getting the resistance feeling. Another one of the projects is looking at how we relate to robots on an emotional level and how they relate to us. So one of the projects that they've been working with has been to make some very interesting animal-like creatures. They look like this here. So basically they've been experimenting with different types of skeleton systems in different formulas. This guy here, you can see that they move in different ways. And then they have this whole fuzzy quality to them. So as you pet them, you get this sense of them responding to you in some way. What these guys are interested in, one of the things that they're interested in, is working with social robots in therapy contexts. So how do you establish a better relationship between a patient and a robot in order to facilitate therapy? And since we're talking about haptics, one of the things that a lot of people associate with haptics is vibration. So one of the people in this lab has made this absolutely incredible library of different types of vibrations. So I've got a setup here of hers, and basically what it is, is it's vibrations categorized into different areas so that you can filter and choose which type of vibration you need for your project. I'll show you it here. So over here, for example, we have um, the different types of sensory and emotions. So you can, for instance, choose something that is agitating or angry or comfortable or calm. Let's choose calm. It's early in the morning here. And then you can see what different types of things they have. They have pawing like an animal or a heartbeat, they have um, a beep, 
musical instruments. And then you can go over here and further break that down into different things. So for instance, if you only wanted it to be animal sounds, then you get some different things here. And they describe it in interesting ways such as, you know, this one might be a pause or a battery low or an incoming message, the things you would use it for. This one is, for instance, using for a confirmation or a reminder, time to get ready for something. And the thing that's making all the sound is over here. For me, I find this library really fascinating because a lot of the vibrations we experience in our phones right now are just very simple buzz, buzz, and there's not really a pattern to it. Sometimes we can start to recognize it. You know, is it a Facebook buzz or is it an email buzz? But with these different types of vibration patterns with their intricacies and the different emotional qualities that go with them, we can start to get into a whole other realm of how people relate to things that they can feel rather than things that they can see on their screen. So that actually opens up just a whole bunch of possibilities. And I think it's really fascinating to get into that. And then there's this. And I'm not really sure how to explain this. It's got a hell of a lot of pressure sensors on it. But anyways, I'll leave it at this. It's been an amazing time being here at Spin Lab. I've met this guy. He's pretty cool. And uh, I've met some incredible people here and gotten great inspiration. I've so much appreciated being here. So thank you Spin Lab for everything. My team here at UBC is going to introduce themselves and uh, hopefully say something useful, but we're going to find out because it's kind of an after work sushi thing, as you can see here. Matthew, um, right now there's Are you making the plate? Do you want some sushi from over here? Yeah. So my name is Sohail. <laughs> Together with Laura and Vanessa, we we're working on haptic muscle. I mean, muscles, activations, and we we're recording uh, EMG signals. We're also working on some sort of human robot interaction system that you'll see soon. Okay, Laura? Sure. Oh, goodness. Hi, my name is Laura. Uh, we're, I work in affective computing um, and sort of therapy, motion He's recognition right there. for robots. Hi, my name is Paul. Um, I also work in affective computing and uh, robotics. Have you got food in your mouth? <laughs> Coming back, sir. Hey, I'm Mario. This is Dilan. She's eating right now, but... Um, She's working on um, a, a new interface for zooming on small displays um, based on uh, proximity. And it's called Easy Zoom, and I came up with that name. I'm Mario, uh, and I'm also working on the same affective computing project as Paul and Laura, but I'm working on the speech signal in particular, so how we can extract like emotionally relevant information. You're introducing yourself to my team. Um, and today I talked about the future of humans and manufacturing, and it doesn't look, it doesn't look good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Colin. I'm the beer getter. Is it still recording? Yes, yeah. good. And uh, I work in uh, force feedback haptics for educational purposes. There you go. And so that is basically the team. Hello. Why 